All right. With that said, I'm going to introduce Terry. Terry is um, an artist of many skills, but describes herself as an encaustic artist, um, but is just doing art as life as a gardener, a real estate um, broker, a chicken tender, and, and all of the art on top of that. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to her now. I'll let your video, Terry, and you're on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn the camera around. So my studio, many of you um, may have been here over time, but my studio is actually in my backyard, which I know is a pretty um, amazing thing. And um, I'm going to try and slow down. Sorry, Nicole, you told me that. <laughs> um, and in this moment, I'm, you know, when the pandemic started, I felt really super fortunate to be in this space and have this. And then, um, as the last week or so has unfolded, it, it seemed it seems like a real amazing luxury. And times I feel overly privileged and guilty about it, and um, all those things. And I'm sure that most people who are living in a pretty um, solid, you know, some of those same things do. So, um, yeah, so it's been a little strange, all those things right now. But let's start uh, to give you a little bit. Some of you may not know what encaustic is, or just have a little bit of knowledge about encaustic, and give you a little um, bit about sort of my art making process. I put together a really short um, slideshow. So with everybody's permission, I'm gonna switch to that. This is just, um, this is a shot that I like to start with. So I was in college and this is a studio space from college and um, just, I, I did a lot of landscape work in college. I grew up in the Midwest and um, the horizon line has always been a really intriguing thing to me and being able to see sky and land. So I spent a good portion of my time then exploring that. So Phoenicians, you've all seen these um, slides of the Phoenicians. These are encaustic and that's why we have them is that they're encaustic. They're a wax-based medium. And the thing about encaustic is that um, it has to be up to about 160 degrees to really melt or really be in full sunlight to do that. So it's a, actually a super stable, um, super stable medium. Um, the, the worst thing actually for it is freezing. So um, again, college one, and I did a bunch of landscapes then that were um, horizon driven. I used to drive in landscape draw while I was driving, which was a little crazy young, crazy stuff. <laughs> um, but these drawings, this group of drawings, um, probably um, post-college um, and stemmed from that, and they're Sharpie on canvas. Um, and what I'm sort of leading up to is that these drawings, um, in 2015 and 2014 and 2015, had a lot of death in our, my family. In 2016, to 2017, I took a year off and it was about the time that my husband took some time off too and we bought a travel trailer and we traveled around. And it was, for me, it was a moment of, I hadn't done a lot of artwork um, for the decade prior to that. I had been raising children and um, caring for parents and those kinds of things. And so I had um, this moment is like, wow, you're taking a year off to do art and you haven't done art in a really long time. Do you even know how to do art anymore? Do you know how to paint? Do you know how to draw? What do you know how to do? You know, it's not part of your daily life and how are you gonna make that change? So on that trip, I took a box of art supplies. And for me, that's um, Sharpies, Yes Paste, um, things to cut up, things to glue down, um, sketch pads, mostly pens, some watercolor things, and all in like a 12 by 12 box, and you know, whatever happened, happened. So um, we spent a lot of time in Joshua Tree and in the Southwest, which was someplace I had never spent any time before. And from that trip, I did a lot of drawings that were rock drawings, obviously, and then started um, 
cutting out of, I took a 1964 World Book Encyclopedia with me, an old world atlas, and um, a New York Times, uh, their art, not their art, but their um, fashion magazine that comes out a couple times a year. I took those things with me to collage with and um, started just cutting up shapes and collaging things while I was there. Um, and then these, this group of drawing collages came out of it. And these are all just on mat board. I mean, I went down and um, bought little pieces of mat board from Susie before I left. Um, this is one of those, a close-up, and this one has a lot of um, themes that continue throughout, have continued since that time period for me, and from the time period that I stepped back into a daily practice of art have been um, telephone poles, wire poles, money, U.S. flags, buffalo, um, rocks, so that I have this fascination with um, nature and I also have this really fascination with urban and how they intersect and how one piles up on top of the other. So, um, and trees are huge in my um, art practice. I take a lot of pictures of trees and uh, these came from Mexico actually. And this one is from the petrified forest. It's just the, the different ways that trees are and, and continue to survive in this world just fascinate me. Um, trees growing between rocks, uh, drawings here. And then that transferred into, I took a um, encaustic workshop where it was fiber based. And these are actually photographs of this tree and they are photograph, they're transferred onto, oh, and I can't remember the name of the paper, but it's a paper that's used in the quilting um, world and you can print on it and then you can sew over it. It's a potato based um, paper and then it washes away. So what I left from that class was like, oh, this is pretty cool. How can I use sewing? So I a texture to these drawings or to these paintings in a different way. So I came home, I bought a sturdy sewing machine, got rid of my little tiny one and um, started sewing trees. And um, then, and so it's just a really a process of getting to that Zen spot and just keep sewing over them. And then when you wash the paper away, you just get these tree doilies sort of. And so I've been embedding those periodically into encaustic paintings over the last years. And then trees show up other ways in these encaustic paintings. Um, this is a transfer of a tree into there. And just more inspiration driving down the road and those long lines of horizon and telephone poles, how they show up in my art period, or a lot actually, <laughs> different wires. And I take pictures, my poor husband, I make him pull over in random places and just take pictures of telephone wires and power wires and cables and towers and things. The American flag shows up a lot too, um, probably more times upside down than right side up in the last um, five, six years. But, and then this is those rock paint, those rock collages, some of those rock collages that came home and made them and um, pushed them further into encaustic paintings, small encaustic paintings with more collage items on them and, and added color to them. Um, just some more that came out of the Mexico trip. And then this is the beginning of the other projects. So besides, so the things that I do probably are draw. I'm a printmaker. I'm a drawer. I collage. I paint with encaustic. And I sculpt sometimes. And for as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to paint a billboard. So um, I have this ongoing billboard project that I started um, four years ago with trying to figure out how do you paint a billboard. And um, so this was an initial drawing sketch for that. And how do you do that with encaustic? So I traveled for a while with encaustics down in the Southwest and set them outside in the desert. Wanted to see what they would melt, if they would hold up, what would happen if I took them to the desert. Um, I go to Burning Man, so the, so this, so after my first year at Burning Man was when I was like, wow, I really could make a billboard and put it somewhere, and I could put it there at, at Burning Man, 
So that's when I did the encaustic experiments and we started making these models. My husband is a builder and a contractor, so I'm super fortunate to have somebody to actually build these frames for me. This is the second one. This was the first one that went. These are 18 by 18 inch panels and um, they are out for two weeks in the middle of the desert with whatever might come. They don't melt. They get a little soft during the day as long as they are facing north. And um, I really thought that people would touch them and would mess with them out there in the desert and that did not happen. Um, so the, um, whoops, especially when I finally, the first year it was just in town and then last year it actually was out in the desert on the playa without any eyes on it all the time and I really thought for sure it would get messed with, it didn't get messed with. So the, um, my, these are some panels from that, these are 24 by 24 inch panels. And you can start to see some of those themes, um, people, trees, more trees. And then these are my little billboards that I bought online and I make little paintings to fill them up. So when I want to practice having billboards. Um, yeah, I think that was really all that I wanted to do as far as that slideshow. Um, so in this pandemic thing, I've been, um, I started out thinking it would be a really great um, couple of months. I'll just draw, I'll just work in the studio. Um, turns out that I'm much more in those moments. It's much more important to me to have, know where my food's coming from, that I have, that I feel secure in my home and um, those places. So I spent the first month really redoing my chicken coop, getting chickens so I knew I'd have eggs, uh, digging out a bunch of flower beds and putting flower gardens in. And um, that was really, I was really surprised at how much that took over what was most important to me. Um, I also knew that the studio tours were coming up and the reason I even signed up for the studio tours was to clean my studio and get it functional and be able to make some changes with how I was using it. And um, so I spent the second month, the month of April, um, cleaning the studio and getting the studio in order. And at about the end of April, I was like, wow, okay, you've organized everything you can organize. Everything is now, maybe you could consider making some art. Maybe that might feel good. So um, I, tend to, I tend to draw a lot in places where things and people are moving. Um, I, when I'm at bars or at concerts or at festivals, I tend to sit and draw people. I like to draw people that way where they're moving. There's a lot of movement going on. And so when I, when pandemic, I was like, well, how am I gonna do that? So I'm gonna go over here and get something for you. Um, I started drawing my chickens. <laughs> Those are little moving guys. And I'm like, well, what the heck, do, you know, how's that gonna work? So I don't tend, sometimes I use some of these drawings that I do in paintings, like that one painting from the billboard actually has drawings in it from things. And I go back and use drawings. But, so I have this whole, I have like three sketchbooks now just from drawing chickens, which has turned out to be a really fabulous therapeutic thing. So I'm sure I'm not the only one who um, is trying to figure out what to do. And um, the other thing, I'm gonna take you Thanks, Lynette. <laughs> I'm going to switch this camera around and just give you a studio tour, if that, that kind of seems sensible at this moment. So, um, I, it may not look uh, organized and cleaned up to the rest of you, but it's super cleaned up. I have a, um, I have a Sturgis Press, a 28 by 55 Sturgis Press, and so I have printmaking capabilities. And I also am a huge collector of anything that seems intriguing to me. And that's pretty obvious from here. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff and surfaces to work on. 
this um, tabletop over here is primarily where I do encaustic and keep the encaustic stuff rolling. This is an etching um, hot plate that's been converted to, I was a lucky recipient when Evergreen went to a non-toxic studio. I was able to buy that at a really fabulous price. Encaustic, if you wonder about how the paint actually comes, the paint comes in these cubes, these really solid, it's like oil paint, you know, super concentrated um, paint medium. And then I also keep a whole crock pot just of plain medium going at all times. I was going to have it hot in here, but then I'd have the fan on, and that doesn't make for a really good conversation. But that's that shot of the hot plate. Um, you got to keep the temperature, so I monitor that. And then this wall here, just things in progress, things that are complete, things that I need to photograph. But most, most things, most of the small stuff is in progress on this wall. Um, I have a couple of glass covered tables. One of them um, is printmaking set up right now, and the other one is covered with all the things that would have been for sale at the open studio. Um, and the printmaking um, part of it, that it's all set up right now, is that I also decided that I wanted to start working on the printmaking some more and using my press, which I hadn't used in a while. And so I started taking a holographic printmaking class online, and that's been pretty darn interesting. But it's also really, um, I've never used water-based inks before, and the Akua inks, I've been experimenting with those. I've been using a gel plate. I've been using anything to just really see if I can make marks right now, which seems to be the really important thing to me in this moment is just mark making. I had some really great things last night print out when I was messing with this that I really liked. And so these, I think that I will ultimately probably collage into other things and, um, and just play around. But these inks, if, I don't know if you guys know about these inks, but these inks, they're soy and honey based. So I can leave them out. As long as I wash my rollers and all those things, I can leave the inks out and walk away and come back. They dry by absorption, which is really interesting. And then the holographic plates that I've been working on, is a, it's an encaustic holographic plate. So, and this one's been printed on, so it's not white anymore. But it's really an interesting process, the, um, that building up of texture and building the plate. The plate's almost more interesting to me at this point than the prints were that I pulled from it, which are really first, uh, first run, first, uh, first uh, go at trying this process. And I also haven't used the press in probably 10 years, so it's been really great to get that going. And then the other thing that I've been doing is when I cleaned out the studio, I found a whole bunch of, I mean, I knew where they were, a whole bunch of half done collage things and half done watercolors or badly done ones on boards that I had traveled with. And so I started just collaging and I've just been really quick, fast collages and not, um, not thought too much about it. So I'm really curious. I'm really curious how everybody, what everybody else is doing to, um, to sort of spark yourself. And then this last week just threw a whole wrench in the whole thing because I just, I just, now I just feel like I'm just making mad art. So I don't know how that feels to everybody else, but that's uh, more what I'm, where I'm at. and. Um, yeah. How, uh, how about questions? <laughs> I have a question. Sure. Hi. Um, how much is, how much um, do materials have to the, um, to the, the subject matter of the things you paint or how much, how much um, do the materials 
are the materials integral to the meaning of your work at all or is it yeah i think that they're they are absolutely lynette um i'm trying to have two screens in front of me i'm sorry um they're absolutely the pro they're more of a pro i guess they're more of a process they allow me to layer things and that's what so for me the jump to encaustic was the ability to layer and then be able to dig back into things to the transparency um that it dried quickly i tried um for for many years with acrylics to light i couldn't do what i wanted to do with acrylics i couldn't go back into them you know i'd i'd scrape them i'd do whatever and it just never created the things that encaustic does so um but then to have gone from encaustic and then to go back and do the different collage work i have a whole different um it's a whole different feel now it doesn't it doesn't feel limiting because i i have this other place to go when i need to do that other stuff and i'm also working with some more transparent collage materials so that's been helpful too so it's it's more of an idea that you can um juxtapose or uh however comfortably or uncomfortably things live together you can demonstrate that with the medium is that right yeah 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 i and encaustic is just it's just fabulous to work with yeah that's great thank you do you temper your own wax or get it ready made is the wax on the encaustic plate tempered so i buy my encaustic wax from rnf paints out of kingston new york um there's a couple of other companies also but uh there's i like their creaminess and how how it works and their colors are amazing so um no i don't make my own i don't temper it i just make sure i don't kill myself with it <laughs> i do i do use um i have a fan system set up in here and I use mask if it's a warmer day. Uh, part of getting the press going and working on the encaustic um, collagraph was that maybe I wouldn't um, be so tempted to turn the hot plate on on 80 and 90 degree days, which is really a toxic situation. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Terry, I have a question about, um, I noticed at Burning Man, you have lights on your billboard. How did they, I'm just curious how they work. Did you use solar or a battery and and how did they work at night? So the first year I didn't put it on the playa because of the light thing. Um, electricity is probably about the furthest comfort zone of any science world for me ever. All I know is it can kill me and um, <laughs> so I didn't do lights the first year and then last year I was like okay I have to figure this out. Uh, my friend Sean is an electrician and he works for South Sound Solar and we talked a long time about solar versus battery and he is a he goes to burning man he's a burner and the reality is is that solar out on the playa is really hard um, you have to keep those panels clean all day and they can sustain a lot of damage it's a really um, it's a, it's a um oh shoot it's not the it's not acid it's um it's the opposite it's but it's anyways it's a it's a bad environment for electronic things to start with so i um burning man gave me um a gift last year and so i was able to use that money to buy some lithium ion batteries and so they're battery powered i would every morning i'd get up and go out and take the battery out of there and put it on a generator and then put the and i had two batteries that i rotated i absolutely will figure out a solar system for my van though for next time because sitting in camp all day while the generator is charging up batteries was not was not my idea of a fun 12 days <laughs> yeah but yeah it was pretty it was pretty amazing it has to have stuff lit up they have to be able to be seen from 150 feet away so on the front there were the lights that came over and on the back there were two red lights that were just they're just brake lights from a trailer that were always on yeah I learned <laughs> necessity is the mother of invention yeah i have to get over my electrical fears yeah 
And the, I think that, that right now I was thinking about that, that mad art thing. I was telling Nicole, I have, um, I have American flags that I've been for years have just sort of toted around and felt like there's an art project in there. There's an art project in there. And when I see one at a garage sale or something like that, I'll buy them or somebody's throwing out their 4th of July decorations, I'll stash them. And uh, so I've been, yeah, so you drive by my house on 4th of July, maybe this year there'll be something <laughs> that's, that's art related. I don't know. It's, I'm not really sure what to do right now as far as art goes, except to just keep plowing along. Yeah, so, yeah Terry. Um, could you talk a little bit about, yeah, how it has been to come back to making? Um, just since I took those two months and put my life in order, or like in general, like I did five years ago, or six, what was that, 2016, 2015, 2016? I'm, I mean, I meant like now, like, yeah, getting back to making. I mean, I personally am struggling with that as well. I know some people are just being really prolific during this time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that it's, I think the thing that I find the hardest is to quiet my mind and um, those really quick, fast collages have been the best thing for me to just get everything out, pull out. Um, I keep, I, I keep collage, I keep boxes. I try and keep myself to a minimum of how many boxes of collage material I have going at a time. And so I just make sure I pull all of those out and everything's available and everything I could want is within reach. And, um, and I just go, I put a timer on and I actually make myself sit and do it for that period of time. Um, I'm also doing that with the chicken drawings. Like when I first, I was like, oh, and I'm just gonna sit out there and then I just would be totally focused. You know, somebody would come and talk to me from the house or something like that. And, um, but then I started putting a timer on myself. That's really been an interesting thing that to make myself sit for a period of time and do art, which has never been something I've had to do in my life. Um, so, yeah, I had really hadn't thought about that so much. But yeah, I've been, I've been using a timer. Um, I make myself sit for 30 minutes, and then I just keep rehit it. Like if it goes off, I'm like, oh, okay, good, and I just rehit it. And I don't know. That's it's awesome. Kind of Does anyone else have any other good strategies? I think you were kind of interested in that, maybe Terry. <laughs> Like what other I, I, my strategy is I think of what will happen if I don't do it. And the fear, the fear of that overtakes the fear of making something. So it's, it's more like when one fear overtakes the other. Yeah, if that's I can't imagine my next three years doing nothing. That's, that's a scary thought. So I start working. There we go. That's mine. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, no, actually, it's more of a comment about our art during this difficult time. And I find that a lot of what I would have been beginning now seems too trivial. Um, I'm taking some online classes which are enjoyable, but now I'm finding they, a lack of importance in what I'm doing. And, uh, and I wish that I wasn't doing that. I like art to be free and I, it doesn't have to be seeking purpose. And yet there's a struggle in me right now, questioning whether this is really worth my time. And if, if, if I do use this time now, I want it to be important and meaningful. And I don't usually have that being stuck in the search for meaning, but this time is affecting me that way. Yeah. Have, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's hard. It's, it just feels really, yeah. What do you What do you make? What What's going to make a difference? And that's I feel I feel like as an artist that, yeah, that that that's the thing that I can bring to the table that might be able to make a difference. But I don't know how that makes a difference. Yes, I also would like to say, uh, Terry, that I'm so attracted to the to your 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 shapes and your drawing and your compositions are beautiful. But I just love the deep saturation of color that I see. It's it's luscious. Yeah, I like the color. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. 
I find that um, I, I've had conversations with people about how much art makes a difference. And uh, my conclusion was that I alone cannot make a difference, but 30 of us all saying the same thing, we can make a difference. So I yeah. think, you know, ultimately as a, as a body of people, then our voices are stronger. So I think I try and see things in that way. It's the responsibility isn't completely weighted on my shoulders, but even if I make one piece of art that adds to other people's art, then I think it, it as a collective voice, it makes a big difference. Yes. Personally. Well, and I wonder if it's just too soon, you know, I mean, it's, I, I've heard it described as a, you know, a crisis on top of a crisis. Um, and sometimes it takes a while to to get away from it and to have it kind of perk into a sense of of shape or form um, or meaning because right now it's just this tsunami that's a little overwhelming to try to get your thoughts together. So, so it's, nothing's coming exactly right now. Like it's okay because it's really you know it's just just a lot to handle right now. <clears throat> In thinking about what Gail said. And what you're saying now, um, <clears throat> several years ago when we, when our military went into Kuwait, that was a long time ago. And I didn't know at the time the art that I was doing was reflecting that whole thing. And it was two years later that I could look back on those pieces and say, oh my gosh, that's what was, other people in the world were talking about different kinds of news. And I wasn't really listening to it, but I was painting it. And I came up with a wonderful piece that I liked that had an angel and a little little child near a lamb. And I thought, oh, that's what we needed. So you're right. I don't think we know at the time. It's an internal thing as well as doing the art is an internal thing. And that knowing doesn't seem to be as Im important for the artist to know. Let the time pass, the world judge. That's a good point. That's good. Yeah. Are you, are you all scheduling time for art? I mean, that's sort of what I'm finding is that I have to like a schedule just, I, is, I, I don't like it or don't like it. Cause I have those moments where I'm like, Oh, as long as it happens today, everything's good. And then <laughs> I'm like, well, it has to happen by this time today or in this time frame today. Yeah. Um, well, it's a muscle. If you don't use it, you know, I mean, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I hesitate to say that I play a little mandolin and I haven't been playing because I haven't been feeling like it. But as every day goes by, the five, six chords that I know are becoming less and less, you know, a part of my muscle memory. So, you know, if, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's a skill and like anything. So I, I like the idea of setting the timer and making yourself continue so that when you are ready and you do have something um, that feels important to you to say that you you can support it that's part of the fear that i was talking about is that you know if you let it slip away then it's difficult it's much more difficult to bring yourself back into shape once you've lost your shape and it's it's the same with the artwork um, I, I personally have no routine, but I do get annoyed with myself if I finish the day not having done something small. And I think the idea for me is that if I, if I see, I usually work on these huge projects and, uh, and if I see my project in its entirety, it scares the heck out of me and I wouldn't start. So I think, okay, what can I paint? I can paint that hand or I can paint, you know, I start, I basically see my job as a, a series of small tasks. And I think it's much more um, comprehensible that way. So yeah, first is fear for me. And I get angry at myself for not doing it. And then I start small. And it may be a small part of a big project or just a small project in itself. But I start small and just keep going. And I think, I think was, it, was it, is it Buddha said that life, um, happiness is a series of, of attainable goals. <laughs> that's a great way to look at it i feel like normally in my work i am like trying to say something like important and right now i'm like i just can't do that i've been 
when I do get myself into the studio, I've been making really simple strawberry pots for growing strawberries. <laughs> nice. hmm. Those are important. Uh, maybe your strawberry pots will turn into something subliminally. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Perhaps. I think um, one of the things that I'm uh, trying to do, I don't paint, uh, but I, I love paper and I like to work with fiber. And I had a whole stack, we probably all do, of things that need to be mended. And I was unsure how to do that in a sort of artistic way. And so I found a book by a Japanese artist. Um, it's intentional mending and it's it's beautiful and very artistic and ends up being sort of like embroidery sort of like weaving and um and then and then the piece that i'm working on today uh i had a, a stocking cap that belonged to my husband rob's mom and they raised sheep and mohair goats and then uh, weavers and knitters would come to them to get the hair and, and the wool. Anyway, so the hat means a lot. And, and so I started writing down on paper a little bit about that, and I'm going to put it with the hat. And it, it's not really art, uh, but yet it's um, trying to save some of those stories. And those projects are are very small, and I can generally do them within a day so I feel like I've reached a goal that's kind of nice. Susan I, I really like the idea of mending that you use it's a very metaphorically rich notion and uh -huh. it's just the note it makes me want to mend something <laughs> right now. Well the in 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 fiber history the Japanese for years and years and, and other cultures as well have um, have mended uh it's kind of a um it's a way to save something that is that has a history with you yes um, so and it's also an attitude of instead of buying things that are inexpensive which we all have to do a lot of the time because that's what we can afford but buying something that is going to last longer so there's less w less waste Yes, and if, you met, and if you mend it, then it gives it even more life. So, and I, I like my that. Attitude. It's wonderful. And I'm in the larger picture right now, what's going on for all of us? I like the idea that some things are salvageable. Mm -hmm. it, you look at the news, you think is this salvageable? But to yeah. mend something is it's a wonderful notion. It's therapeutic for me. <laughs> yes, I I can see. It's a really nice word right now. That's a nice word. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. I think another nice word for right now, which is a little different than mend, is transform. Mm -hmm. For all for all the nows, all the things. Um, yeah, well, this has been a really fun conversation. Do you have any last Questions or comments for or from Terry? No, just keep making art, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for sharing Thank your you. work with us. Thank uh -huh. you, Terry. Thank, Thank you, guys. Lovely. <laughs>